Okay, continuing a discussion on inverse functions and finding inverses. So we've kind of talked about both of these ideas so far. We're just going to hit them again, maybe from a bit different perspective. So we're going to look at determining if a function has an inverse. If a function has an inverse, that is a function. I should say that is a function, right? Because uh, all functions have inverses, but not all of those inverses are themselves functions. Okay. Then we're going to find the inverse of a polynomial function. So we've looked a little bit at finding inverses. We're just going to focus on a little bit more in these. So first off, inverses and their relationship graphically. Okay. Here you can see the graph of f of x is x squared. That's this parabola right here. Okay. The graphical relationship between a function this darker graph, and its inverse, the skinnier graph, is that they are reflected over the line y equals x, and that's this dashed line right here. Okay, so if you reflect that parabola over that line, right, so like this point, well, this point gets reflected there, this point gets reflected down here, this is the inverse. Okay, that's the inverse of x squared. If you use our process for finding the inverse from our last section, you would say x equals y squared, and you'd solve for y, so you'd have to say y is plus or minus the square root of x. That is what is being graphed here. Square root of x is this, negative square root of x is that. So first off, just be aware of that graphical relationship between a function and its inverse. And then secondly, you can see this is the inverse. That inverse is not a function, and we know that from using the rule we've used in the past, just the vertical line test. That inverse does not pass the vertical line test. So what could we look at in the graph of x squared to determine if the inverse was a function without actually drawing it? The horizontal line test. So basically what's happening from a function to an inverse is all the x's and y's in the function get flipped around for the inverse. Okay, so everything that was along the horizontal axis is now on the vertical axis. Everything that was on the vertical axis is now on the horizontal axis. So if you look at x squared, it does not pass the horizontal line test which is the same exact idea as the vertical line test, just with a horizontal one. And that tells us that the inverse is not a function. So here, we have sine. Is the inverse of this a function? No, because if you draw a horizontal line, it's going to hit the graph in multiple spots. So no, doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Or this one, does this pass the horizontal line test? Yes. It's a cubic, right? It looks kind of interesting right there, but it is only hitting once. So that does pass the horizontal line test. So that's that first part. Determine if a function has an inverse that is a function. You look at the graph. If the graph passes the horizontal line test, then yes. If it doesn't pass the horizontal line test, then no. So then here, finding inverses. This is that process that was introduced in the homework the other day, but again, we're focusing on it more. So step one, if it's presented with function notation, it can be easier to rewrite it as y equals 2x minus 7. Then switch the x's and y's and solve for y. So then you're going to add 7 and divide by 2, so you're going to have y is x plus 7 over 2. So we can say g inverse is x plus 7 over 2. That's the inverse. So that idea of switching x's and y's, this is what it looks like algebraically. Just legitimately take the y and the x and flip them. Graphically, it's the same idea. If you take each point, like I illustrated on that other page, take the x's and y's and flip them around, 
and that results in that reflection over the line y equals x. So algebraically and graphically, you're doing the same thing. Just switch the x's and y's. Then here, find the inverse of this function. So this one's going to be a little bit more interesting, but we have y is x squared minus 10x plus 25. To switch the x's and y's, we're going to say this. Right? Every x becomes a y, every y becomes an x. So then how do we solve that? This one, you would have seen in the assignment on verifying inverses, there was one that used this same idea. You can factor that quadratic and it is y minus 5 squared. So then you're going to have y minus 5 is plus or minus the square root of x. So then y, if we add 5 to both sides, is 5 plus or minus the square root of x. We're not going to write this using this notation because that is function notation. And because of this plus or minus, one x value will get you two y values which means it's not a function. That's the same thing as not passing the vertical line test. So this is the inverse, but it is not a function. So we're not going to use the function notation for it. So that's it. Determine if a function's inverse is a function as well. Quickest way is to graph it, see if it passes the horizontal line test. If yes, then yes. If no, then no. Then find the inverse of a polynomial function, switch the x's and y's, solve for y. Right? So that one algebraically can be fairly basic or fairly complicated, but the idea is always the same. Switch the x's and y's, solve for y.